So this is it, folks. Not only is it the finals of Clash Bash, but it is the final game of this best of three with Alex versus Rotu. We're about to watch Ira on Alex's side versus Azalea on Rotu's side. And my goodness, depending on that first turn out of Azalea, this could be a big, big deal. Is it a lightning start with some kind of dominated Azalea effect to get things off? Or are things slower and the ninja grind really gets to you? I'm excited to find out, so let's take a look at game three. Here we go. Like I said, Ira from Alex, Azalea from Rotu. Both those women just looking wildly imposing in their hero art. Ira crossing her arms, Azalea leaning back on the bar. Both of them look so confident in this matchup. And if I had to give the edge somewhere initially, I would say this is probably Ira favored. Ira has just a built-in way to get so much value out of these uh, formats uh, just due to the nature of plus one being so, so powerful. It's so consistent, and plus one is double the value it is in CC because the live the life totals are halved. So, whew, my goodness, uh, Alex probably feeling pretty good to see this matchup, but I'm not going to count Rotu out. There can be some nasty plays out of Azalea with, uh, of course, dominated effects. And Red in the Ledger is an Azalea spec that is always good against ninjas because, uh, hey, if you're locked into one action, then that plus one will just never come into effect. Anyway, from the Iris side, you can't really swing Kadachis to get good value on all your cards. So that's what we're going to be looking for. We're also going to look for, geez, wild, wild turns like that out of the uh, Azalea where they went too wide, presented 18 damage in uh, attacks alone, plus the Blood Rot, Frailty Inertia. We've got the Yahtzee combo from Outsiders already on the table, and that was just Azalea's first turn. So how does Ira play into this? Well, her equipment, Mask of Shifting Perspectives, I honestly don't remember what that does, so I'm not sure if it helps here. Uh, Vest of the First Fist definitely does help in smaller hand scenarios, uh, but I don't think she really wants to get value out of it in this capacity. Uh, generating two resources would be pretty weak uh, other than paying into something like blood rot um, but I honestly it was an option this turn because at the end of the day uh, oh well you know you know actually I think the best mm, that was an interesting turn the blue pitch for the Kadachi did get plus one so you're spending a blue for one point in that scenario because the frailties are gonna neg the Kadachi buffs anyway uh, but they could have just pitched the blue into the blood rot pox and that guarantees two value out of that blue. The only other way around that kind of turn was to actually pop Vest, and then you could get plus one and still pay for the Blood Rot, but whew, I don't think that would be worth it either. So really interesting. Uh, we see that just like value gaming isn't necessarily where we're at in this matchup, and it, it is hard to be strictly a value gamer when you're into Azalea, because if your deck is built around like blocking specific turn cycles, you know, oh, I'm going to get a 15-point turn because I'm going to block six and return nine, Azalea can stump that because she's throwing Dominate anyway. So if your entire turn cycle, which Ira is actually built on this a bit as well, if your entire turn cycle is built around value from blocking, then it will fall apart when Azalea dominates. So that game plan has been wildly consistent from Rotu here. Two dominated turns back to back, two frailty turns as well, which means the Kadachis just got zero value. We're passing into Azalea again here, and it looks like it will not be a dominated turn because the Azalea did swap into a knock, so even though the knock can set up the top of the deck here, uh, there is no more uh, Azalea activ uh, activation to swap in that card. So we're hoping to see just some giant pump turn from the Azalea, from row two here. Uh, if it can't be dominate, then you might as well still try to take the full hand. So uh, sure, with a red in the ledger on the top, this is likely the story we're looking at. This is also, oh my gosh, two pumps with one floating still, this might be a Snapdragon's Bullseye type of angle as well. It's a damned if you do, damned if you don't type of situation here because this first effect already wants to um, take so many of your cards. There's uh, two onfits effectively with the, the the inertia and the frailty again, frailty again against those Kadachis. But we know the Azalea drew into the red and the ledger from the Death Dealer. So now the Death Dealer is going to uh, guarantee that Bullseye Bracer Snaps here lets you shoot the red in the ledger as the follow-up. So all these cards, whether they're on block, well, basically these cards were forced to be used on block, right? There's nothing else that um, the Ira could effectively do, because if you don't block, then you just take the red in the ledger and lose. Uh, uh, lose your actions, right? But 
my good. Okay, you know, I said, I said Alex was probably looking to be ahead on this matchup. They even brought in Oasis to help the onslaught of Dominates, but holy freaking moly, the consistency of damage out of the Azalea deck has just looked insane so far until this turn. Until this turn. That totally fell apart from the Azalea side. A Spire sniping with no pumps, no Dominates, nothing, just coming in for a four card three is awful. Uh, but, you know, interestingly, this extra turn cycle gives us a look at what Ira's deck is uh, consisting of and you know it's more two blocks than i would have thought to make this matchup favored for alex generally the ira deck is almost strictly block threes and it's almost always built around you know kadachi kadachi something kadachi kadachi something something kadachi kadachi uh you know tunics up which isn't available in this format to be fair but it would be like vest in this case for like a huge finisher when they weren't expecting it so um that's just not how uh, it seems the the clash version of Ira is built here, but wow, look at that was crazy. Azalea just won. Like I'm I'm on my tangents, and Azalea is just cleaning house. That was fantastic. Road two wins the clash bash with really really impressive play on Azalea in that last. Still with a stumped turn was able to find that next hand to just win the whole thing. But well played to both players there. Oh my gosh, that was wildly exciting. I'm hyped to play clash again oh what man i gotta convert some of these magic players that live near me if i just show up to clash decks i think we can get them hooked those games were insanely fun to watch and the spikiness of just seeing where the hero pulls off their specialization where they do the thing they want to do when reinar shows no mercy and ripped the heart out of dromai when azalea lined up the red in the ledger that is the flavor of Clash Bash. It's not about, oh, I spammed Codex of Frailty. Oh, you know, my e strikes and CNCs. No. Do what your hero was meant to do. Send them on their journey to being an adult hero. Pull off the plays that only they can make, people. And win in that kind of impressive, impressive, very impressive fashion. What a fantastic finals there it was so fun to commentate thank you all for bearing with my rambling antics and huge shout out to nathaniel who put this all together who is now running clash and who i'm definitely going to follow up with about the, all the intricacies of this format now because i think i think some of these decks need to be built in paper and i gotta i gotta force feed them down some uh card game players throats near me uh because i really want to play i really want to play so with that everybody thank you so much congrats to rotu for winning and hey, if you want to see more of me, of course, I have the Mansant YouTube channel and I do most of the streaming now for LSS. So any of these big events, you will probably see me involved in some capacity. I'm going to be whispering in James White's ear as I see him at some of these future events. Hey, you should officially support Clash. It's like kind of cool. So there we go, people. Have a good one and see you in the next one. <laughs>